Hey YouTube, got a special install today and it's going to make a world of a difference in comfort. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just hit that subscription button real quick. It'll help me out a lot. If you want to have, have notifications anytime I post something new or go live, hit that notification bell at the bottom. But let's go ahead and start out today and I'll just discuss installing a window air conditioning unit. Now I had a window air conditioning unit here before. Uh, this is out in our garage that we've had um, set up to where I can run um, my business out of it and it needs to be climate controlled. That's not just hot and cold, but also humidity. And I need to be able to, um, I need to be able to control the temperature. So it gets really hot because as you know, if you've ever worked in a garage, when the sun's out and it's hot out, it turns into a pretty much a Dutch oven. And when it's cold out, whatever the temperature is outside, it eventually becomes the same temperature inside. So I've already got a little space here and with the about 300 square feet of space inside the garage here, a uh, little space heater pretty much keeps it under control. It's got a little thermostat built into it, but for heat, keeping the heat down, I didn't have anything for that. So now I've got an air conditioning um, window unit put in and the brand on this is the Medea. Now you've probably seen some um, other videos and uh, some of them kind of start where a lot of work's already been done to get the window unit in place. I'm talking about like custom paneling or like a custom cut window and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna custom cut a window and make this thing fit so this had to fit with the window that I had now the garage was probably built in 95 and the window is an old window and I'm not replacing the window I'm just using the window as is so I wasn't able to video as I did the install because the installation instructions and the information that I had um, to be able to put it into the window that I have were kind of back and forth because the window sash is not the same height as new window sashes. Uh, the width and the height of the window opening was fine, but the frame of the window is not as thick as a newer window. So um, I'll show you what I did to make this work. So if you're just trying this and, and you're not sure if, if the window unit is gonna work for what you need, um, I'm just gonna walk you through it and show you what I did to get the window to work. Now, I, I've not even finished all the work that I have done so far to install the window. Uh, the air conditioning unit, I just installed it yesterday and today it's nice enough to come back out and take a little video and show you what it looks like with the window unit in place. So real quick, the window unit that we're going over is the U um, Inverter Medea window unit. Now I did get this on Amazon, uh, it is available through other um, places that they sell it, but I decided to get it through Amazon and so um, it's already been installed and I will show you the parts. Now there is there is the installation manuals in here and then there's also the smaller manual that's actually for connecting it to your Wi-Fi and connect it to your phone. So mine is connected to my phone now and I can control it from the house. I can control it from in the room. It also comes with a controller, which is a really nice controller. It actually has an LCD display. Everything you need to control it is on here. And the unit itself, as you can see here, uh, the front panel here just pops off and there's that's the filter that's in here. It is a cleanable filter. Um, it's just like a cleanable filter that's on our Waycar way uh, dehumidifier. And as you can see, this is actually, oh, this is actually um, swinging. It actually pivots on its own. And so you can set it to swing and this will swing open and close. You can make it so it stops swinging and whenever it turns on, it just blows the air straight out. I've just got it on the swing because that was kind of a cool feature. You've got your on off button, your swing button. Um, you can put it to sleep. You can actually set a timer on here. There's a timer that you can set to when you want it to turn off. Um, as you can see the light, if you can see it, the light over connect is on because it's already been connected to Wi-Fi. There's an eco mode, which means it just won't run as much as it, except for what you need it to and the temperature will raise up a little bit. There's different modes for if you want it to be automatic and it just does everything automatically based on the temperature and settings that you have or you can set it to cool only. You can set it to dry, so it'll actually dry the room out just by running the air through here and, and pulling the humidity out of the air. Or you can just turn it on and you can just run as a fan. So on the fan setting here, there is a auto, which I have it on now. So it's just gonna automate based on the temperature that you have it and how hard it needs to blow to get the room to cool down. Or you can manually set it to low, medium, or high. So. When you're sitting in here, and I'm working right on this bench right below the, 
the air conditioning unit. When this thing turns on, I don't even hear it. Um, it has a lower decibel than the than the um, the previous model, which is not the U the U design. The U design just means that from the outside where the window is, there's actually two separate parts of the of the body of the unit. They're both like this, and the window actually comes in between the two. So the front of the body is what you see here, and on the outside, which I'll show you, there's another part of the body which is on the outside. Now what that what that is what that what they change is they put the motor on the outside, the, the fan, the big blower is on, actually on the outside. And so what that does is it takes all the sound of the air conditioning unit itself and puts it on the other side of the window. Now I've got some curtains up, so I, I've got some, you know, whatever they call it, the, the light deadening curtains, because I need to be able to sit here and not have a big glare on my computer screen while I'm working. So I've got curtains up and the curtains actually work. I can put them around the, I can put them around the unit, they're not going to get sucked into the unit, they're not going to damage the unit or anything. But let me just walk through um, getting the frame set up and how you, how you set up the frame and then putting the unit on the frame once you get the frame set up in the window. So let me show you the details on that and how I got that set up and then we'll go, we'll go a little bit forward and I'll tell you a little bit more information about getting it installed and, and what I'm going to do to kind of clean it up a little bit because it's not completely done yet. But hey. It's a work in progress. Um, just got this installed yesterday. So, so far I haven't had anything that I needed to adjust, but for the most part, everything works fine and I've not had any problems, but you know, it is a more expensive unit. I think it was like, it was normally $399 and they actually had it on sale on Amazon, on Amazon for $349. So I got it when it was on sale. Hopefully when you go to look at it, it's on sale still. Um, I haven't found a cheaper price than $345, but you know, because I use Amazon a lot and I, I have um, credits and promotions and stuff that I have on Amazon, I use the credits and stuff to be able to purchase this on Amazon and save me more money than buying it anywhere else. So anyway, let me show you around and we'll see what it looks like to get this thing installed. So as I mentioned, you can see the unit that's outside and here's, this is the window here. And you can see that this just slots right between the window slots right between them. There's some foam that's in here that you have to cut out. There's a little bracket that swivels out. And then there's a, there's a metal piece that's under here that actually slides into the window channel. Now you can see from my window, if I can get it to adjust the light here, here we go. Uh, that's that foam piece. That's that little swivel piece that the foam connects into. And you actually measure from the inside of this channel piece out to the where that touches the window to be able to seal it up. And then there's some window sealant that it comes with that goes on the bottom of the this is the sash, the bottom of the window here has some um, foam on it. Well, this is the bracket here. This is an extra piece right here. I think it's called an anti-tilt bracket. So this is an extra piece here. Um, there's a, there's the two screws, these actually come in the kit. And then this, is, this frame piece here is, is the bracket that actually holds it in the window. Now, if I can get it close enough here, I'll, I can, I'll try to get it closer here to where you can see this. So this is the all the frame I have on the inside of my window, just this little piece right here. So what I did is I just put a, I put the screw right into here to where this piece, the little corner piece, is right up against the track of the window. So it's like that on both sides. So you can see where the frame, I've just got it right into the frame and I've got it tucked right into the corner, right up against the window track right here. So that's the screw, that's a screw that the kit comes with. And then there's another screw down in the bottom, that screw right there, that screw the kit also comes with. And then what this, what you do is you just set the distance to where I've actually got a measurement to this mark right here. And that's the center of the whole window. So you measure from side to side inside the window and there's a measurement there. And then on the front of this bracket, I've already got the foam pieces on here to cover the little holes because there's a bunch of little holes on the front of this. So what I did was I lined up the little arrow with the mark that's in the middle. And then these little push buttons here go, this push, this button pushes in and it just goes into where um, it, um, can fall into these holes that are all behind this foam tape here. So you can extend this arm, you can extend the arm out on either side. And if your unit is 26 inches, if your window is 26 inches um, wide or more, then you're supposed to use the long arm. And if your unit is 26 in, is less than 26 inches, you actually use a short arm, arm on this side. There's that anti-tilt bracket I've got over here. 
I've already got it installed on both sides. And then as you can see, again, there's another piece of foam that's on this side and it fits into this little swivel. You'll see that when you go through the instructions where the swivel is. So you're literally just following along the instruction page here. There's just a little bit of information about the unit itself and the different modes that it has and setting up the fan, that's that bracket. So this is pretty much what this whole thing looks like. It's just all underneath here, and then it actually goes out underneath the unit on the outside. So that's what this part out here is. It's actually holding the unit, and then these arms right here come down, and they've got these rubber pads, and they're actually sitting up against the wall on the outside of the garage, outside of the house, wherever you're gonna mount it. So that's what this thing looks like, and what I was saying is the right arm extension that's over here, there's a long one and there's a short one. So should be up in here. Right arm extension short, so that's up to 26 inches in the, the other right arm right extension arm is for 26 and over so and there's the screws that I was talking about those are the screws that attach the uh, open window bracket there's a left hand and a right hand that's that side arm foam that I was saying that goes in between um, the, the outside edge of the unit itself and then these are different um, seals foam seals and then on mine, because mine's a wooden frame window, there's a one inch additional um, sidearm foam that you need to attach to the bottom. So I'll show you a picture of that in a second. And then the only thing that's left is this little window sash lock. So I've just got the window sash lock attached up here. So it just keeps the window from being able to be opened. And it also helps if you, now that we've got this, this top window sash is actually free. So it actually makes it so the top window sash can't sag. So I won't end up getting a, a gap at the top. And then these little pins that are here that I didn't mention before, uh, this is a cotter pin and then this little pin that goes through, they actually go through so that you can adjust these arms up and down this track. And there's numbers on the inside there, but that's what this whole thing looks like. Like I said, there's that, there's that arrow there's the center arrow that matched the, the line in the middle where I, where I marked my line. So that's where that line is up. And then you just push the little push pin and you can slide the arm in and out as much as you need to, to where it matches the width of the window when you took the window measurement. So that's the, what the window measurement looks like. And then they just show you that they're putting a little piece of the seal foam, which is this piece right here, the window sealing foam. So they show you some tools that you need. You are gonna need a Phillips head. You will need a small level, uh, uh, like a foot level is not gonna work. You need a small level. I don't remember using a flathead screwdriver. I used a pencil to mark my spot, a uh, ruler tape measure for measuring the window and where you're lining up the brackets and stuff. And then you will need a drill because those screws that you put in down in here the screw that's down in there and the screw that's right there you need to drill an eighth inch hole first so that's what that says drill an eighth inch bit now that is one old looking drill um, scissors I did have scissors with me so that I could cut the foam because you need to cut the foam to different lengths now you can cut these pieces of foam with it but this and the larger piece of foam you're gonna need a razor to cut those so I actually used this and that's what made me, that's what made it so I could get on the inside of the foam and cut it this way and then come on the back side of the foam and cut down and, and where this met in the middle, that's where I was able to get the foam to cut in half. A pair of scissors are not gonna cut that big old piece of foam. So let's see, let's see if there's anything else I need to show you real quick. So that's where it talks about lengthening the arms and which arm you need to use, the short one or the long one, and then it shows that you need to put some of the foam, um, bracket sealing foam, which is the same as this white foam, but it's actually up underneath here. Now you can see there's just a slight gap in here. You can actually see outside right here, there's just a slight gap. It's like on the outside it, where I screwed it in, it pushed it down far enough that it's touching, but there's just not really like a, there's not really like a weight right here that's really pushing down in the middle. So I'm probably just gonna run something across the front of this and just seal that up. It's not, you know, the garage. It's, it's the garage, so it's not completely sealed up anyway, but this just shows if you're installing it on a wooden window or a vinyl window. So the vinyl window, there's just this little lip here on vinyl windows, and that's where you put the inside of that channel. So the this piece, you put it on the inside. I just did mine on the inside of the window frame. And you can kind of see it in the picture here. That's actually the window frame. There's the corner of the window frame. That's that little piece of the, the brown wood that I have. 
that's actually right here so that's what that's what they've set it up against you you can kind of tell they've got it in that corner right there and that's that same corner where i put it where i've got it up into the corner right here of the window channel and then out here is where you want to use the level so you're actually putting the level on this flat surface here you can put it on the flat surface up here and what you want the level to do is either be completely level like where the bubbles in the middle or they call this a quarter bubble where the bubble is just on the outside edge of the line here and that's in relation to where this is at where the level would be sitting right here the level is actually tilted down so the bubbles come up a little bit so that's where it's not perfectly level but it's a little bit tilted to where the outside of the unit is actually facing down so what else we got um, if you need to make the extra adjustment you just can't get enough of a, an adjustment by moving those arms up and down you can move the screw that's here now there's some foam that's already stuck on here and I actually moved the foam that's up underneath to to fill this hole um, there's actually a hole up underneath here and there's a piece of foam on the outside but it was like about an inch and a half back away it's almost like over here almost towards that opening right there and so I, I moved the foam up so that it actually fills that hole this just shows that you're using the cotter pins to go through um, so that you can adjust the arms now I did have a problem with mine because I've got vinyl on the outside and the vinyl um, the way the vinyl comes, sorry, the way the vinyl comes down is it kind of comes down and makes a step and then comes down and makes a step. So these little feet were right on one of the steps. These little rubber feet were right on one of the steps. So I had to modify it a little bit. So I'll show you what that looks like on the outside. And then they show here again using that bracket sealing foam and just covering the holes. So that's what I've done here. You can't see any of those holes because I just covered it all the way across now. Obviously you spend 300 and 350 400 dollars on an air conditioning unit and I would say this looks pretty tacky um, I added these extra little pieces that were left over from the foam that goes under the window sash I just added them here because there was actually a gap. There was a little bit of a hole here So I just added them here, but I mean it just looked kind of tacky that they don't they don't give you like a cover piece or a trim piece that goes across here to cover any of this it just looks like this and there's you know, you just have to make up your own um make up your own trim to, to cover it. Now, one of the details you need to know is there are these little tracks that are actually in the top. They're actually in the top above this right here. They go inside the channel and you have to slide them out and put them into the window sash. Now, it tells you to met, not the window sash, but the, the track for the window. Now, the window track on mine was it's a half an inch and it says if it's a half inch or less, then you need to flip the bar around. So instead of the bar being in this direction on the inside instead of the bar being in this direction you need to turn it around so that the the skinny piece the skinny piece right here is going in this direction in relation to the unit so on the inside this little piece over here is actually going this direction instead of that piece being on the instead of that piece being on the outside that little piece is on the inside so you actually have to pull both of those pieces out and flip them around in order for that to work so the next section just tells you how to get the unit set out now because it's already pretty much assuming that you've you've put the unit on you've put the frame on you've screwed it in you've got your adjustments you have put your foam on you've already leveled this and you've already got the feet to where they're gonna be tied up against the wall now the feet on these, they don't show in the picture here, but there's actually two little holes on the other side. And I'll show you what I did. I actually used those two holes and I actually put screws through them and screwed the bottom of the feet into the wall on the outside. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get outside. But for now, I'm just gonna show you in here while I'm enjoying the 72 degrees. I'm not sure if that's flashing in the video. You see a lot of LED videos and they're always flashing from the, the refresh rate on the LED, I guess in the video but this is where you set the unit onto the top of the frame and as you can see there's these channels that are inside the this is the body of the bottom of the air, air conditioning unit and as you can see it, it just goes over the top of that channel on both sides so that's what this is showing that you need to do put the indentations over the top of the frame you slide the window down so that it just kind of holds it in place uh, the window itself if this were to tilt out or fall or the screws came out or something else happened to it, I guess it would ca it would catch itself. Uh, we already went over that. There's our matching, little matchy match. That's that little piece that I was telling you that swivels out. 
and then this shows um, with that swiveled out and then what you're what you're doing is you're measuring from the edge um, let's see we'll get to where we're, we're measuring from the inside edge of that channel there to where it touches on the window that's what this measurement is and what's that for that is for cutting the foam and now the only difference with these is like I said on the wooden type you use that extra piece the additional sidearm foam and, and t it has a, a adhesive edge and you just pull the paper and then tape those two together and then once you have your measurements that you measured on both sides see it only shows one side in the picture here it only shows this side but you need to measure on both sides and then you take that total measurement and you add a quarter of an inch so you add a quarter inch to whatever that measurement was that just makes it so it's nice and tight when you slide it down in a minute and then there's this extra piece of foam here um, it says it's the window ceiling foam it's this kind of like rolled up gray thin stuff. It's the thin stuff that's right here that goes on the bottom of the sash. And so what you wanna do is, it shows you that this needs to be on the air conditioning side. So there's this extra lip here, and this is about two inches. And what that does, is it just puts it to where your foam, you can see the gray foam that's in here. It starts at the bottom of this plastic piece, so that's what the measurement's for. And then the foam goes around, it goes underneath here all the way down, and then just stops at the edge here. And then the little angle part, the little L part, as you can see, this part right here is on the inside. So this whole piece is set to where that the L part at the top is like this. And that's where that's at in here. The little L is actually up here at the top. So there, there'll probably be little tricks and stuff to sealing this thing up a little better. Like I said, I just got this installed and just wanted to show you what this looks like. So let's see what else we need. So that's that track thing I was telling you about where this is the thing that slides into the window track. Now they show it where here where it's just cut off square, but it's not cut off square. It's shaped like this. There's that little angle end on it. And that's what you needed to make so that the angled in is facing in or out based on the measurement let's see yeah it was the measurement that's all the way back here so there's that if it measures half inch or less flip it so the small end faces out so that's what i was showing you where the small end faces out let's get back to where we were so you're, once you're done, you actually just, you, there's actually a screw in the top and you have to take the screw out to be able to slide these little tracks out. And so take the screw out and then you just reuse the screw. And let's see what else, what do we got here? Do, do, do. The, the, okay, that's the anti-tip bracket. They don't show the piece of foam and it says here, it was removed for its illustration only. So you've got the anti-tip bracket that's actually into the window channel all the way up against the wall and then you put the screw in to hold it in place. Now these, this didn't work on mine. It says it's a um, window lock. My window sash at the bottom, this part of the sash is actually too tall and the window locks, I don't even think I'll be able to get in there to show you what, where they're at. So that's the window lock, but it doesn't even reach it's, it's way down here. It doesn't actually reach the top of the sash, so the window lock doesn't actually work on mine because the, the bottom of the sash is too tall. Then it just shows putting in that little, um, the angle sa the sash lock, which I showed you, the little metal thing at the top. And then it shows putting this, there's actually a thicker piece of foam seal, the window sash foam. You put that in, in between the two, so that's actually up here at the top. So that's actually right there at the top between the two, right there in between the two windows. So that just keeps the air from being able to go around. So I think I've gone over everything on the inside now. Yeah, and this is just kind of the last step, just kind of checking for gaps and seeing if there's anything else that you need to do. And so this just shows you how to pop open the door. So there's this little, there's a little tab right here on both sides. So you just pop this out how you get into here and then that 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 black thing right here with this mesh that's actually the filter it's not like a HEPA filter or anything and then if you see this little black wire down here that's just a, probably a temperature sensor so let's go on the outside you can see this thing is still working I mean you can just barely hear this thing running 
don't even know if you can hear it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's really quiet. The last one I had had no adjustment for the decibels. This one, I think the decibel on this unit is, I think this unit is like 40 decibel. And then the, the older model I think is like 53. So I think it's like 13 decibels difference between this running on low. Right now it's, it's running pretty low anyway. I'd have to turn this temperature way down for it to have to work really hard to get this room to cool down. So it's keeping the temperature pretty much where it's at. I mean, it's, it's probably 70, 75 degrees outside right now. So it's really not having to work hard. We'll see what ends up happening when I get to days where it's like 90 out and this little garage turns into my easy bake oven. But let's take a walk outside and, and just look at how this looks from the outside. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm still, this is a work in progress and I'm still not completely finished with it yet. Now, if I was Medea, one thing that I would change would be the ability to adjust this whole track in because I would want this up against the back of the air conditioning unit. But for whatever reason, because of how, but the, the distance between where that frame bracket is and where my sash is and coming out here to the end to where the air conditioning unit is gonna sit, it's not, it has this, rise right here and that's what this adjustment here is for that's why this bends down to, to the, this can go all the way up to the front but if this went all the way to the front you'd have you know you'd have that much more of the air conditioning unit not using this support here so it'd be nice if you could you know you can see how much this thing's sticking out I mean if you're walking back and forth on the sidewalk it's not like you're gonna run into it but that'd be a nice adjustment if Medea would figure out how to get it so that you can actually adjust this track in and out somehow like this would also slide uh, but you can see the unit outside right now you can see where the window is you can see where that little flip bracket is there's the piece of foam so now you can see on the that that piece of foam would be the l the little tab is actually on the on the inside not on the outside that was a detail that i almost missed um, and i cut my foam but thankfully i'd cut it in the right direction where i'd put the that's that gray foam that goes around there's that piece of gray foam that starts at the bottom of that tab and then comes around so, and then you can see there's the, there's the upper sash. So that's the U design. So this is the U. This is where the window goes into the U. So the motor and everything is in here. The coil, um, the, you know, it's kind of like a blower, the thing that circulates the air and also the, the part that has the, the coolant in it, all that stuff's more than likely out here. And so it's doing all the work out here and then just the channel that's underneath that runs under, that's just to help just to circulate the air into the room, take the, put the, put the cold air in and pull the, pull the hot air out. Um, I don't know if it pulls it from the inside or if it's just pulling air from out here and then it just filters it, I'm not sure. But you know, some people obviously know more about this than I do now. It's, it's a really big surface area for the back of this. Now this is a 350 square foot, I believe 350 square foot uh, air conditioning unit. So this is gonna handle the 300 square feet in the garage really well. Now the arms that I was showing you earlier, that's where these slide in and out of the track and there's the pin, there's the cotter pin. I just put the cotter pins on the inside just so you don't see them from the outside if you actually look under here. Um, there's that piece of foam that I was telling you that I moved under there. I moved that foam so that it, you can see where it used to be, where the black spots are right there, and I moved it closer to the channel. I moved it up into here to, to seal that gap. And then you can see the pieces of foam that are underneath. That's what they explained in the video, in the inside when we were looking through the manual earlier. Now I've got this set to where these arms come right to the vinyl, but look, that's what I was mentioning before. So the very end of the leg was hitting right at the edge of the vinyl and it was falling off of this and the, there was no way to adjust this any further back and get this to line up correctly. And I wanted these to be mostly up and down for mo for maximum support. So all the weight is is carrying down the arm instead of out and, tr and trying to push. Because if I had these arms, sorry, if I had these arms tilted more this way so that they were back in these holes and it was tilted more this way, then the force would actually be pushing down and pushing out. And I don't want the weight pushing out. I want the weight mostly pushing down. So I want these as, almost as vertical as I can, but they have to have weight on them to push down against the wall. And like I said, there's two holes in the, in the front of this metal bracket here. 
there's the rubber pad on the back so what I did is I actually used some shims I mean these are literally like door shims or if you're installing a door so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut these door shims right here I'll take this back off I'll put something under here to support the bracket keep the weight off but I'm gonna take these screws back out and then I'm gonna cut this and then I'm gonna paint these white and then once these are painted white they'll pretty much just disappear uh, right now like I said I just I needed to put something in place to keep the weight up while I was doing the install and then just come back later and fix that but that's what I've got on both of these I've just got I've got some um, small deck screws like two inch deck screws so they just go through and I just pre-drilled the holes uh, pre-drilled the holes through the two holes in the metal through the two shims and then into the wall so that's what that looks like for now this will all be cleaned up once I get these the ends cut off and then I get these painted and then I just made these so that the I, I set these so that the nut side was on the inside I don't think both of them were like that I think one of them had the nut on the outside so I just switched it so when you're looking from the outside of the unit on either side all you see is the bolt head not the nut on the other end of the thread so that's the outside So the last thing I wanted to show for anybody that's interested in setting up their phone, now you don't have to do this, the remote that they send, which is a really nice remote, and I think it says in the description at the top on Amazon that it comes with a remote, but then when you look at the look further down the line, I haven't even take the I haven't even peeled the screen protector off yet. But when you look down the lines in the description, it mostly shows you how you're using your phone in the setup. And so it almost seems like it doesn't come with a remote, but it actually does come with a remote and this is like a really nice remote. So um, you can just use this. You don't have to set up your phone, but if you want to set up your phone, that's what this instruction manual is for. A little smart kit is what it's called. So you need to go to um, the app and here's a, there's a way to download and install the app straight through here. You can also just go to the, to the app store and just find Medea Air app and just download it. You need to create an account. Once you get your account set up, what you do is you unplug the plug in the wall, plug it back in, and then you hold down the connect button. And when you hold that down, it's gonna say AP. It's gonna start blinking AP. You're gonna make sure that your phone is connected to uh, 2.4 gigahertz because this will not work on a five gigahertz um, Wi-Fi setup. So this will come up and give you the option to either um, go through Bluetooth or you can select your appliance type. Now, it, this works through Bluetooth. Once you have, uh, when you have your phone on 2.4 gigahertz and then the, once you've downloaded the app and then you go and you add a device and when you're going to look for the device, you can just say, let's see if I can get this to focus. Doesn't want to focus, there we go. So you can do scan for nearby device. That's what the bottom part is there. So you hit scan and then it's gonna show the unit. And then once you have the unit, you can just click on it and then you can change the name of it. Um, it will it starts by getting you into the Wi-Fi. So your home Wi-Fi, and then you gotta enter your password. And then it's gonna do this little thing where it's thinking for a while. It doesn't take but a couple minutes and it'll pop up. And then you see that you've got a, a unit attached. Then there's a name for it. You can click right here and that'll allow you to change the name on it. Once you get the name changed, then your Windows your home window is going to look like this. So you can click on the unit and then once you click on it, uh, this part is if you're configuring by the appliance type, but we did the Bluetooth type. But once you get it set up, let's see. So on your welcome home, that's what your home screen looks like. And you've got the appliance and then I can't even remember what the discover part is. You can set up voice activation with Alexa. And then if you go to me, that's what your account is set up as. And then when you click on this, it's gonna have more information about the actual unit itself. And let's see, so that's what this screen looks like. So if you had one, in, you can, if you had one in different bedrooms in the house, you can set them all up. You don't, I've, I've only got one, so mine doesn't say living room. Mine I, and mine I actually put as um, garage AC. And then you've got options to set on your, um, the air conditioner itself. And so, this is just kind of stuff you can figure out as you go. Uh, you can set up a schedule. You can set up um, a timeline. Here's what the, under the function, you can turn the timer on and off. Uh, the energy monitor and the bill control, 
those have not come up yet on mine. I think it might, I'm not sure if it's because there's something else I need to log into or it's just because I hadn't had, had enough time to run to get that information yet. But those two don't show up on mine. I do see where I can check and then you can check the unit itself and it'll tell you how it's running. You can set your units. Um, you can share the device with other people. That way other people can control it through the app. But yeah, this part with the, where's it at? Yeah, so this is when you check it, it'll tell you like everything's fine or it'll say, you know, there's some issues that you're having, you're running at, you know, there's certain features that need that need assistance. Uh, the energy monitor part, like I said, I don't have yet. I don't know if that's showing up yet. I haven't even looked again. The bill control, um, mine doesn't have that either. And I'm not gonna share the device with anybody, but that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else to go over. That's all the technical stuff. And it's a really nice air conditioning unit and I'm glad I have it. I did a ton of research, as you've seen in all of my other YouTube videos. I always do a ton of research before I buy something. And so this had to justify the amount that I spent on it. Now you could buy a real cheap air conditioning unit for like 100 bucks, 150 bucks, even even a decent air conditioning unit is like 200 bucks. And it's just going to be a just a flat plate and all the all the components are all together. There's no U, so it doesn't keep the sound out. Um, it doesn't have the the swinging fan door, that kind of stuff. You know, this one just looks nice. Seems like it's going to do a really good job. Seems like it's going to last a while now. As soon as I installed this, it rained, and I didn't have any issues with rain getting in. I have seen some videos where people said I saw some tape at the bottom, and somebody had a review that said that there was water getting in from the bottom. So, you know, if that if that's something where they didn't put the foam in right, or maybe the the unit's not in the right spot on the window channel. I'm not sure. That's probably just person to person. So hopefully this review helped you in your decision. And if you would like to please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everyone taking the time to view my videos. And if you have any other questions about it, just let me know. Or of course you can just look this up online and just see all the information about it. It's pretty clear. I haven't run into too much that doesn't tell you something about it if you're looking for that information. But that's it for now, and I will see you again on the next video.